Hi, I'm Terry Vanner. I'm a professional photographer, and I'm teaching Lightroom Classic 2025 from the beginning. We're at episode eight in our beginner's workshop on Lightroom Classic. Today, we're going to learn all about masking with a brush, and I'm going to show you how masking presets can speed up your workflow. So let's get into it. Back in our same catalog here inside of Lightroom Classic. So let's go over, let's head over to this Pelican image. All right, so let's go into the develop module. And the first thing we're gonna do is create a mask. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna click mask. And down here, we're gonna scroll down till we get the brush. And I want you to notice something about this. Over here, there's a shortcut and that is the letter K. The letter K will bring up the brush mask. And I, I, I say this because you're gonna do a lot of different brushing and you're gonna have a lot of different effects that you're gonna use with the brush. So learning that shortcut is going to speed things up quite a bit using the letter K to give yourself a new mask on the brush, just like that. So let's go in here and let's see what we want to do. Let's go ahead and zoom this up a little bit. And let's say just for instance, we want to uh, bring a little more feature to this bill on this, on this Pelican. So we'll click, click the brush and let's go ahead and start brushing the bill we have it on auto mask you can see right there so it'll select the things that it is it, it's not going to select outside of that range which is pretty handy especially for this and because it, it's against the uh, a black background right and we're going to brush away All right, so let's bring this back a little bit. Let's bring it to say 50% so we can see the, the bird a little bit better. So we've got the mask on. And of course we have our pins on or off depending on what we wanna work with. That will just tell us that there's a pin on and this will be not. And again, whenever we do, once we start to make any kind of changes to this, we're gonna, it, the, the red filter-ish showing the mask is going to go away so let's go ahead and scroll down a bit and we're going to go exposure and we'll darken that a little bit and let's say we'd want to add some more color to it we can add more color to it and we can maybe oh let's say for instance we want to uh, warm up a little bit we can also add a color if we wanted to we can come over here and add a color and let's say we want to add orange to that we can add an actual color to it, depending on what we like. And depending on how intense you want that, you can bring that in at whatever opacity you want. So that gives us a lot of different ability to work with masks. And this was all on a brush, right? We were able to just grab our brush and paint in what we want to have done to it. So let's go ahead, and this is our original, and this is our one that we're working on. So let's make a new one here. And one of the things in Lightroom that is just super neat is that we have the ability to work with presets. So if we go back into our develop module and we've got our Pelican here again, we're going to click on brush. And now what we can do is we have presets that are loaded in. Now, some, some of the presets are already loaded into Lightroom when you get it, or you can purchase presets. So for instance, I have some brushes that I'm selling on my digital products page and they're wildlife brushes, right? And what, what they're built for is just for working with wildlife and nature images. So for instance, on this particular one, let's say we want to make the color a little bit more dramatic on this. So we can go to ColourPop and that's a brush and it puts in all the parameters that we're looking for, okay? So now when we brush, we're not getting the mask, we're just getting the areas that we want to color pop. So that's called a preset. So when you are work, you can buy presets, you can make your own. I'll show you how to make them too. You can buy mine, other people sell them as well. And you can kind of go in and create whatever kind of preset you want or buy them if somebody's already done the work and it'll and make it real easy for you to work with some images, right? Mine happen to be wildlife brushes. A lot of times brushes are going to be things like, uh, 
um, you know, more landscape or people oriented or that kind of thing. But these are wildlife brushes. So that was a simple way to just brighten up the bill, right? And give it a little more color. There's before, there's after. Pretty simple, right? Now, if we want to add a new brush, we can just hit the letter K. We hit the letter K and now we're going to get a new brush and we can come over here and change what it is we wanted to work with. So let's say we want to work with, oh, let's see, we want to take our um, feather highlights down. So this allows us to paint and bring our feather highlights down. Now you can see what happened here, right? This is way extreme, right? But easily enough, you can come over to the amount and slide that back. And now you've got a gradual darkening or lightening of that brush, if you will, to get it to the point that you like. Now, of course, we can take, turn this off and on, and you can see what we did here, right? So having those brushes at your disposal is really helpful. So let's go ahead and reset this and we'll make our own brush and I'll show you how you can make your own brushes. So we come over here, we click brush and we're gonna go ahead and make a new brush. So let's go ahead and paint our bill again. Just like that. Not great, but it's good enough for this demonstration. So now this preset is set on custom, right? Because it doesn't know what you want. So let's go ahead and come down here and we're gonna say, okay, let's create some new things. You can come down here and pick a preset if you already want, but we're gonna make our own preset. So let's go over here and we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna darken it just a little bit and we're gonna bring up the warmth and we're gonna bring up the saturation Okay, so let's say we like everything that we did on this. We have other images that we might want to use the same brush on. So the, what we do is we come over to that same custom line, click on it. And of course you go through brushes that you have already, any brushes that you might've bought. And then at the bottom, we're going to save current setting to a new preset. So let's save it. And we'll call this new yellow bill. So this is something where if you're if you're working with other birds that have yellow bills this will be a brush you're going to go right to so we'll go hit create and now we look at this and we say okay now we have the ability let's go ahead in here let's go to our original create a virtual copy and we're going to come in here go to develop go to our brush click a brush and we have this listed here, right? We have all of these different, so that one was called new bill and they usually fall into alphabetical. There it is, new yellow bill right there. So you have the ability to just click on that. And now when you brush, it'll do exactly what you told it to do. And if you, if you don't like it for a particular shot, like it, this looks like it might be a little too dark, you can always come over here to this amount slider and slide that back a little bit and get to the level that you're looking for. So this is a real simple way. You can buy brushes like mine, or you can buy them elsewhere, or you can make your own. And over time, you'll build up your own. And that's what I did. I, I was using brushes that uh, that I used a lot. So here, I'll give you another example here. Here's, here's another one that I've used a lot. So got this dog running in the field. We're gonna make a virtual copy so we can look at it again. Let's go ahead and virtual copy it. And we're going to make a new brush. So how do we get the new brush? Letter K gives us a new brush that was just real fast. We're going to come in here and we're going to say, okay, what I want to do is I want to do uh, my very first one, which is iris highlight. So let's go ahead and zoom this up. We'll go up to 200%. And see the iris here? We want to bring that up a little bit. So let's go ahead and just paint in and around this iris. Then we're going to hit the letter K again. We're going to get a new brush. And this one, we, I do these in order. So this one was uh, number one. So this is number two. So now what's going to happen is we're going to do just 
inside of that iris, right? So we, we did the outer part of the iris, and now we did the underside of the iris. Then we'll hit the letter K again, and we'll make a new brush. Switch this over to number three. And this is iris enhance. And so let's go ahead and pull this just a little bit more in this area here. So now we've brightened up and that looks a little extreme for this. So we'll just pull it back just a little bit. So you can see these three brushes that we use pretty quickly to deal with the iris light here. Now let's say the last one we're going to do, we're going to hit the letter K, get another brush. And we're going to come down and we're going to do number four in that series. And that is highlight. Now watch what a highlight does. That just puts a highlight there. So as we pull back and we go back to something more realistic in terms of viewing, you can see what we've done. Let's go ahead and turn our, our uh, mass off. A dull eye, or we can brighten up the eye. So it's a real simple way in masking the ways that uh, on these particular brushes that I built. But of course you can build those brushes yourself and you have the ability to work with any of these brushes and manipulate them any way you want. In this particular brush, for instance, if we want to work on this, we can bring that highlight down a little bit. So it's not quite as intense. If we want to bring the color of this next brush down, we can bring that down a little bit. We can deal with any of the variables that we want, but having the ability of these on, having this kind of control on the tip of a brush is just fantastic. It's just a great way to go. If you're enjoying this kind of content, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell icon to be reminded of my next video. Share the video. If you know other people that are trying to learn Lightroom, share it with them. That's a great way for me to get more followers. I always read all of the comments in the comment section and I respond. So feel free to leave a question or a suggestion and I'll get back to you. I appreciate you guys commenting and watching the videos. If you'd like to reach out directly to me, you can do that by my email, terry at imagelight.com. I'll be happy to answer your questions that way and then add you to the mailing list so you'll be notified of future videos that I release. Keep in mind that I also have running now some new episodes for the Nature Photography Podcast. It's an audio version, something to drive in the car. If you can't get enough of my voice here, you got to listen to it in the car. That's a way to do it. You can check it out on Spotify or Apple. Wherever you listen to your podcast, just type in The Nature Photography Podcast. All right, let's get back into masking with the brush. All right, let's open another image here. I'll show you another one here. Let's make a virtual copy of this. If you remember, this was that HDR we did of, of uh, in Yosemite Valley. All right, so when we come in here, we can see that we've got this uh, Yosemite Valley shot, shot basically after dark, so it's pretty dark and the colors aren't as extreme as we'd like. But let's go ahead and make a new brush, hit the letter K, come in here and we're gonna come down and we're gonna do fall colors. So fall leaves rather. And I do fall leaves because I love photographing in autumn and I wanted to have a brush that was simple for me to come in and just paint onto any of my fall colors to enhance what those look like. And depending on the scene, however I want those colors to look, I can lower the opacity of that intensity or I can brighten it if I want, which in this case would be weird, but lower it a little bit to try to make it look a little more realistic. And of course, you never want to forget to also do reflections so that reflections are duplicating what you're seeing and like reflect, like for instance, if I wanted to do those reflections, another way to do that would probably be this. I would make a new brush, hit the letter K, and then I'm going to call this same thing, fall leaves but I'm gonna make it much less intense. So we'll paint. And we'll come over to our custom, go down to fall leaves. And we're actually gonna bring that back because it's a reflection, right? It's not going to have as much intensity as 
the actual live version would be, right? So that's how you control that. One is going to be two different brushes, right? You got one brush up here and one brush here to brush in the intensity of those colors. And this one here is a little bit less. So simple way using my brushes, but you can make your own presets and create your own brushes however you want. So as you're working with images and you're going through, always think about how easy that is to hit the letter K, get a new brush and start building on and making new things with that brush. And if you don't like it, you know, you can obviously get rid of it, but that's a real simple way to uh, improve your images by adding brush masks into your, into your images. And it really, uh, I think it really enhances the, the files. It, you know, it, it, you have the ability to go in and do whatever it is you want on an image. Now we have the ability to do that on the tip of a brush. So to me, this is an invaluable tool inside a Lightroom Classic. All right, till next time, we'll see you.